So in the last video, which I'll link to, we sent an email and embedded the URL for the PDF into the email, so it was a clickable link. In this video, I'm going to be using Make, which was formerly Integromat, to download the file from AWS, which is where it's stored in NAC, and then attach it to Gmail and send it with the email as an attachment. So I'm signed into Make and I'm in my classic clips folder. I don't have any scenarios, so I'm going to create this from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is create a webhook. Now the webhook uh, comes in two types. There's a mail hook and a JavaScript version. I just wait for this to filter down. So it's the webhooks module at the top. And I'm going to use the mail hook and send an email to trigger this. Uh, first thing to do is to add a description of what the hook's called. So that's the name of the webhook. I'm just going to copy that and save. And I'm actually going to just change the name of the scenario and change the, to the same name as the webhook. So this whole scenario will be called send attachment for terms of business. So the next thing I want to do is to copy this address. So this is the email address that we'll be sending um, from NAC to trigger this scenario. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm just going to click OK to save. So back in NAC in the pages section, and this is my table, and I still want to click the terms of business action link. So I'm just going to edit this, I'll click onto the heading, and this brings up the palette on the left hand side. So here I already have my action rule from before. So I have the header set, the link text says TOB, and it's going to send a custom email and it's going to send it to uh, that address there, which was the old address. I'm just going to select that and delete and paste in the email address for the new webhook. And in the subject line, I'm just putting the ID and in the body of the email, I'm putting the record ID. So let me just explain what these are first of all. So I'm just going to delete these. In the subject line, um, if I click on the drop down here, I can choose any one of the fields from this object. So I'm just using the auto increment field. It's just a useful way for bug checking to make sure that it's pulling the right record through. So that will be in the subject heading. I'll get a, a, the auto increment number come through. Unfortunately, um, putting the record ID into the subject line isn't an option. So if I scroll down, these are all my fields. Um, I get to the bottom. I don't have the option of putting the record ID. But in the body of the email, I can. So from here, I can choose the fields. If I scroll to the bottom, um, I get the record ID. So I can put that in. Um, always need to make sure that it's, it doesn't have any spaces before it. So I'm just going to delete and do a backspace to make sure there's no spaces. So in the body of the email that gets sent to that webhook will be the record ID. But it's because this message is uh, created in HTML, uh, you can see if I hover over this, it will show you what the HTML is. It's uh, encapsulated with some paragraph tags. So I need to extract the record ID from this string. Now I've done a, a video previously on uh, how to do this with a mail hook, but effectively what you have to do is remove the first three characters and then every record ID in NAC is 24 characters long. So I'm going to save this as it is and go back over into make and I'm just going to run this scenario in place. So this is just looking to receive an email. So now back in the builder and I'm going to click on the action link and this action link will send an email to that address. As before in the previous video, I'm also updating a date and timestamp for when that button was pushed. So in make, you can see that I received one bundle of data with a little number one in a bubble. And if I look at that, it shows me that it received record ID number 29. And this was the text that's received, but I have never been able to extract that. So I do use this HTML, which is embedded, uh, encapsulated in these uh, paragraph tags. So that's the record ID. The record ID ends in 5567. So back over in NAC, the record here is Carl Holmes and the record ID is number 29. And if I look at that, in the raw data, so in the records section, I can see that my auto increment is number 29, but NAC doesn't expose the record ID on the table. But if I 
go back to the live app and view this record in the URL it will show me the record ID for this which ends in 5567 so this is the record ID that's just been passed through to make so the second step now is to actually extract this record ID and then look it up so I can pull through the information from the customers table so I'm now going to add a NAC module and then I need to use the get a record which returns details about a record specified by its ID so I already have a connection to the application classic clips if you don't you need to add it and put your API key details in so I'm looking at the client object and the record ID is coming from the HTML content but I can't just simply put this in because it starts with open bracket P and another bracket so I need to strip that out first so I go into text functions and use a substring and I just arrow over to the left and what I'm looking for is the HTML content uh, from the third digit to the 27th digit that will give me the 24 uh, 24 digit term record ID so I'm now just going to run that again come back to NAC and press the action link that runs get one more in here and one here as well so if I look at that you can see that it's pulled through and looked up the record ID 29 and there's my name and all the other details related to this record um, each of these has a little toggle against it so you can open these up and see additional details so when it was added you can see who added it and the record ID of the person that added it I can look at things like um, the client name and it breaks it down into the first middle last and title so you can then leverage bits of this data so that's now got us to the point of actually getting the record ID from that email um, action link now what I want to do is to download the PDF so in NAC this is the PDF here and in the builder this is the document here which we want to download so all of the documents that are stored on NAC are stored on AWS so I need to download it using the URL and then attach the attachment to an email so my next module is going to be a HTTP and the HTTP I need to get a file which downloads a file from a given URL and I only have one option so I click into here and this is now giving me all the fields from uh, the NAC module which is the record and I need to scroll down and look for the file field so terms of business is here and I've got the ID and the file name and what I want is the URL So once again, I'm just going to run that, come back into NAC and run the action link again, jump back over, webhook fires, it looks up the record and then it downloads the PDF. So the file name is here, terms of business.pdf. The next module is going to be a Gmail module. If you're using the kind of free Gmail, so not G Suite, you'll need to go through the OAuth process to validate it. This was introduced, I think it was last year, to stop uh, uh, people using free Gmail accounts for kind of spamming and sending huge amounts of email. So I'll put a link in the description for you to follow that. It's a, it's a fairly straightforward process, and once you've done it once, you don't need to do it again. So uh, this is a, a standard Gmail account. So I'm just going to add that and I'm going to um, send an email. So it's this module down here. So I'm already connected to my uh, Gmail and I've gone through that OAuth setup. So what I need to do is add a recipient and then add an attachment. So simply click on add recipient here and I'm going to pick up the email address from this first NAC module. So I can go into the top for search items and just type email and it will show me all the uh, fields and I just want to pick up the email address here and drop that in and then um, uh, I'm going to put on my attachment so I click add attachment and it automatically defaults to the module here the blue get the file module so it's going to use that the output of the HTTP module 
as the attachment. So the last thing I need to do is actually put some content into the body of the email. So the content needs to be in HTML and I use uh, an HTML editor to do this. So on the left hand side, I can simply just write my text and that will give me the HTML here. So I'm just going to copy that HTML and paste that straight in. And where I've got the deer um, before the paragraph P tag, I'm just going to click into here, put a space. I'm going to come back to here and just remove the email filter. And I want to pick up the person's name. So I'm just going to scroll down here looking for the client name, which is here. Uh, that's the full name, Carl Holmes, but I'm going to just take the first name. So I'm just going to click and put that, if I just drop it in there. So it's got dear, just make sure I've got a space now yet. Yeah. Dear Carl, and then I'm just going to put a comma, um, and then it will do the paragraph return. Please find attached the company documents. Uh, many thanks, uh, classic clips, and then the attachment will be on there. So hopefully if I save that and run that again, come back to NAC and click my action link, jump back over into the scenario, we see that run. And I've got an output there as well. So I have an output and I'll go back to the emails. I can see here that I've got the uh, variable in here, dear Carl, please find attached the documents. And then this is a standard attachment. The only thing I did notice is that um, I didn't have a subject, so it said no subject. So I missed that. So I'm just going to jump back into the make module and put the subject in here as uh, terms of business. And I could also put uh, variables in here as well uh, if you wanted to use something from the data. So let's just save that. I'm going to run that one more time. I'm just going to come back and uh, select this email and delete it back into NAC and run that again, jump back over into make. So that's run it again. And once again, we have an output. So I'm just going to go back into emails. Emails just arrived and it now has subject line as well. So there's a couple of things I like to do before I finish this scenario. First of all, I'll rename the modules so they are a bit more meaningful. So the webhook, um, what I tend to do if I go back to NAC is I use the view name. So if I click on this view, I can see this is view number four. So I have a better idea of where this is actually coming from. So if I'm just going to right click on here and say rename and call this view number four. The get record module is OK, uh, but you could rename that as well if it makes more sense. So you can rename this to um, get customer record. And the HTTP, once again, you could rename this to say, you know, download download PDF. So when you're looking at this again in the future, it makes a little bit more sense as towards what it's doing, what it's doing. The last thing to do is actually to turn the scenario on. Up until now, we've just been running it once. Um, so when we toggle this on, the lightning bolt here on this module denotes that it will run immediately. And it says so here as well. So we're just going to switch this on and this will run straight away. The difference is now it won't do that kind of animated uh, graphic when it goes along like we did before, which is kind of in testing mode when you're running it once. But this is now switched on and will run on that action link as we successfully created. So I hope you found that of interest and uh, in the next video we'll start to step this up and uh, add some more functionality to this uh, make scenario.